Hello, so if you're like me and you've been using Scrapey for a while and you've become used to using XPath selectors, then you may wish to do an occasional project with Beautiful Soup, but be reluctant to go back to using CSS selectors. So today I'm just going to demonstrate how you can use XPath selectors with Beautiful Soup. Um, so don't let anyone tell you you can't do it. <laughs> if you're like me, if somebody tells you you can't do something, it usually makes you want to do it even more. <laughs> and that applies to uh, more than just coding. But anyway, so let's begin. I'm just going to run through some slides just so that um, you can pause it and look at the code more easily. And then I'll do a demonstration of the code in action and I'll show you the output at the end as well. So um, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Okay, so imports. Uh, requests. From BS4. And... Okay, then next thing we want to do is we want to say, um, let's put in another new line. So, uh, URL equals https colon forward slash forward slash four. I'll do the www as well. www dot formula one dot com and then we want to say um web page equals requests dot get url we don't need to pass the header information i've already tried it so um then next Uh, we need to say something like soup equals ut well, soup web page dot content. So we're getting the content and we're transferring that into a soup object, beautiful soup to object. And we need to specify HTML parser. You can use others, but I'm going to use HTML parser. Soup equals. Apologies. We need to now. We need to say D O M equals E tree dot HTML capital HTML. And then we say the string of soup. Okay, so now we've got an object which we can use to create uh, an XPath selector, much as you would be familiar with if you use Scrapey. So we'll say response equals um, dom.xpath. And then this is where we put the XPath in. So if we go back to the web page, and this is where we need to identify the um, we need to identify the XPath. So let's get rid of that. And here we go. So let's see if we can find an XPath to identify 
one of these news articles. So if we go to inspect element, there we go. Still loading. And what we want to do is just make this a fraction bigger. And if I do, there we go. It's taking us down here. Let me just scroll in a fraction so you can see that a bit better. There we go. So hopefully you can see that it's a P tag and the class is F1 dash dash S no margin. And hopefully if we go inside that, there we go. We can see the new story, which matches what we've highlighted just there. Look, so um, what we need to do is I'm just going to cut that. And we know it's a class, we know it's a P tag. So um, let's go back into here. And what we will say is open bracket, I've already put the bracket, <laughs> uh, double forward slash, and you could put P, but I'll just put the asterisk there as wildcard character. And then we say at class equals open double quotes, paste the class name, close the quotes, close the square brackets, that's called the predicate. And then we want to get the text and then close the initial opening quotes and then double brackets there we go you can see the pale blue just confirms that we're matching got our brackets matching so so far so good and now all we need to do we will have a list um we'll have a list of the text of the news articles so if we say for article in res and then we can say print article and then i just want to put in um, a separator just so that it's a bit nicer to look at so let's do that and now if i save it and if we run this fingers crossed we should get some news articles with some separators in between. And if you're ready, something's happening. There we go. So we've successfully extracted. Thank you.